So, uh, moving over to video number two. So, um, Simon Bancon argues that you can integrate both the neurodiversity movement view about natural variation, but also um, the medical model view. He says that both views can be taken together because, um, and this, uh, because autism itself contains huge variety. So for some, so he argues that, say, for those who are like less afflicted um, and maybe um, might still have difficulties, well, they will have difficulties because otherwise they won't get diagnosed. I mean, you need to have difficulties to get diagnosed, don't you? You need clinically significant impairment. But maybe some people's clinically significant impairment is, you know, um, not ho not creating so much problem for them, maybe, or maybe it's clinic. Obviously, it still has to be clinically significant, but you know, not a lot more easily managed, then maybe those people, you know, for them maybe it is a kind of part of natural variation and so on. Um, but then there are other types of autism which are far more, affect the person far more significantly. And for them, the medical model is better applies. Or at least um, you have to accommodate the medical model as well, not just the social model. Like I said, the social model still has a place. Even I, even, I would argue the social model always has a place. But for some autistics, you also need to make room for the medical model as well. Um, uh, Cohen says that the term disability is used when an individual is below average on standardised measure of functioning. And uh, when this causes suffering in a particular environment. Whereas difference refers to variation in a trait like eye colour. So eye colour is an example of difference. You know, eye colour, blue eyes, brown eyes, green eyes, whatever, that's an example of difference. Um, that is not a disability. Um, that does not cause suffering. Um... You know, it's just variation in a trait. And you don't expect any accommodations for having blue eyes versus brown eyes, do you? Because it's just a difference. That's what I mean. If, if, we're, if we're just saying that autism is just a difference and nothing else, you know, just like eye colour, then you can hardly expect people to put in place special adaptions for you because they'll just say, well, why should we? What makes you more different than any other normal person? <laughs> like, what makes you... What makes you more more needing special requirements than any other just person like you know that's that's why you need that's why we need to add, that's why it's so important to advocate for autism is not just a difference like that that is more than that because otherwise you're not going to get any help and that's what these neurodiversity people don't seem to understand and it's and, and, and they're and they're actually creating problems particularly for people who are like more, most severely impacted like, their rhetoric is just not helpful at all. And it's actually quite disturbing, what they say. Um, so, yeah, he talks about heterogeneity within autism itself. For example, differences in language and IQ, and that it can occur with other conditions. He says that more than 95% of autistic children have at least one condition in addition to autism. That comes back to my point that I've made before about pure autism being a myth. There's no such thing. Pretty much every single autistic person will have a, at least one other condition. I mean, that's a high number, more than 95%. That's big. That's the vast majority, isn't it? Um, he argues that within autism you'll find both differences and disabilities. Um, and you will also find examples of disorders which is more compatible with the medical model. So he argues that the differences in disabilities found in autism is compatible with the neurodiversity model, whereas the examples of disorders is more compatible with the medical model. Um, he says at genetic level, about 5 to 15% of the variance in autism is attributed to rare genetic variants or mutations, and he says this results in disorder, while about 10 to 50% of the variance is attributed to common genetic variants, and that results in individual difference or natural variation. I would also like to add, by the way, that... While you can say that that's individual difference or natural variation, like these common genetic variants, I feel it's, first of all, I feel it's a bit of an artificial binary separating rare mutations from one of the mill, from kind of um, uh, genetic um, 
common genetic variants because after all I would take it surely anything that happens is a natural variation like even a rare genetic mutation by dint of the fact it happens albeit rarely is still a natural variation I don't think it makes any difference whether or not it's rare or common you can get both genetic variations I think that's just a false division like just because something's common doesn't make it more natural than something that's rare does it? like sickle cell anemia is um is a harm is a harmful uh, mutation, isn't it? Um, but it's still it's a natural variation, though, isn't it? It's still natural. Cancer is natural. Doesn't mean it's good. You know what I'm saying? It, anything that happens in a in a human population is natural, or it wouldn't happen. <laughs> so that just doesn't make sense to me. Saying one is natural and one isn't that doesn't make sense. Um, but even assuming that that is all natural variation. Yeah, that's what the point I wanted to make. A natural variation, just because it's natural variation, doesn't mean it's good. That's a kind of natural fallacy. This assumption that just because it's natural, it's good. Um, like, certain mushrooms are highly poisonous and can kill you, and they're natural. So natural doesn't mean good, does it? Do you know what I mean? Um... Simon Van Cohen argues that there's a case for all of the terms disorder, disability, difference and disease being applicable to different forms of autism or to co-occurring conditions. He says that neurodiversity is a fact of nature, our brains are all different, and I said that's true, neurodiversity is a fact of nature, um, that's separate to your neurodiversity movement though. You can separate out neurodiversity the fact from the neurodiversity movement, which is like a sort of political ideological movement um, that layers meaning onto that fact and create this whole ideology around it um so yeah obviously our brains are all different i mean no one's going to argue otherwise are they our bodies are different our brains which are part of our bodies are also different i mean that's just a fact you know you don't need some um amazing uh university lecturer with a phd or something to tell you this like any normal person any person off the street will know that it's not like rocket science it's not like some esoteric truth of course all our brains are different. I mean, why do we need a whole ideology built around that? It's just so stupid. I mean, it's just a fact. Like, obvious, duh. Uh, it's like, uh, so obvious, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. He said that, um... Oh, yeah, he also talks about how the neurodiversity movement takes a more balanced view to give equal attention to what a person can do and doesn't pathologise the focus disproportionately on what the person struggles with. Um... Yeah, for me, though, it's basically person first. Like, every single person has strength, like, just by dint of being a human being. And, like, both, and it's like looking at the whole person holistically. But the fact of the matter is that when you go for help for your condition or disorder, you go for help because you have a problem. You need that problem to be looked at and to be redressed. Obviously, it would help if the person helping you takes a holistic approach and looks at you as a whole person, obviously. But at the end of the day, like, you, you, do, you go to help because you have struggles. You don't go to help to help you with your strengths. So that, that, just, that just is weird, if you ask me. Anyway. Um, but yeah, Cohen argues that we need to make space for the medical model too. So that's basically what he has to say on the matter. So let me know your thoughts and thank you for watching.